This entire PC gaming setup that can comfortably play games like Valorant at 60 FPS only costs $200 and I'll even show you how to upgrade it in the future. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm going to be showing you that even if you only have $200 to spend, or maybe you're switching over from console gaming, that that's actually enough money to build a full PC gaming setup like this one. And if you're new here and you want to see other budget PC hardware videos just like this one, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, uh, let's check this setup out. All right, so before we jump straight into the parts list for this setup, let's just watch a few clips of me playing Valorant at a very comfortable FPS with the graphics pretty on point. Now, don't get me wrong, this game is pretty easy to run as we proved in my dedicated Valorant benchmarking video which I'll have linked down in the description but even just looking at these clips it's pretty crazy knowing that you can get all of this for just $200. As a quick disclaimer this setup will not get you to 1080p and ultra settings with crazy graphically demanding AAA titles let's be realistic here but if you're looking for a setup that at least get you into the eSport easy to run stuff then this is the video for you. Saving the PC for last let's start with the monitor here this is the Acer SB220Q which I actually made a dedicated video on. This monitor here is a 1080p IPS and a 75 hertz display and it actually got my award for the best gaming monitor under $100 last year. It's rocking super thin bezels on the side, an incredibly small overall footprint, and for $90 this monitor is packing some serious value. Brett from UFD Tech actually made a more recent video about this monitor not too long ago so go check that one out if you're interested in that. Now although this monitor is rocking some serious value, if you want to save even more money you can probably find like a 1080p and 60 hertz panel used locally for like 40 or 50 bucks. I'll link some searches down in the description. Moving on, we get to our peripherals, and I know you guys have probably seen this bundle before, but I've been really meaning to try it out for myself. This here is the very popular Red Dragon peripheral kit that only costs a whopping $53 brand new. There are a ton of these combo deals on Amazon right now, but the one I always hear about is this one from Red Dragon because they actually make some pretty decent parts, so let's sort them out one by one. Starting with the keyboard, specifically the K552, this is a mechanical keyboard that's easily my favorite part in the combo. It's rocking a 10 keyless, pretty minimal design with what Red Dragon calls custom mechanical switches. I don't know what the actual switch is, but I can confirm it's like a Cherry MX Blue, super clicky and lightweight feeling. The LEDs only go red, so you'll have to pay more money if you want full RGB, but overall, I can't believe the accuracy and heavy build quality of this thing in a combo for just $53. I actually used this keyboard in a full Twitch live stream. Make sure you're following me over on Twitch, by the way. I've been streaming every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and I said during the live stream that I would have no problem paying the full $53 for just the keyboard alone. I don't know if I'm overhyping it, but I just think it's a really solid product. There is no wrist rust, however, so that is definitely something to be aware of, but let's move on to the mouse because here's where things go the complete opposite direction. This here is the Red Dragon M601 gaming mouse, and it's easily my least favorite piece of this bundle. If you want to buy this thing on its own on Amazon, it's only $15, and I wouldn't even recommend doing that. First up, it's rocking, although a 3200 DPI sensor, it's one of those typical cheap gaming mouse sensors that you can instantly notice some serious lag and lack of accuracy when you're coming from a proper more expensive gaming mouse. To my surprise however there are removable weights so you can tune it to your liking and there are six total buttons so you can set these side buttons to do what you want but to be honest this mouse just isn't doing it for me. I really don't like how it's incredibly lightweight and plasticky even with all the weights installed and the lag of the mouse is pretty tough to deal with. Moving on we have the headset. This is the Red Dragon H101 and although this is a super lightweight and cheap feeling like the mouse I actually don't have much negative to say about it. This is about the quality that I was expecting from a $53 bundle. The sound isn't nearly as nice as a higher end headset, but that's obviously to be expected. And I was actually surprised with how long I could keep them on my head before they got uncomfortable. I also used this gaming headset for an entire Twitch live stream and I really didn't have any problems. I didn't use the mic however, so let's switch over to that for a quick sound test. Obviously it doesn't sound super clean and like high quality like this microphone, but it's definitely good enough to talk to your teammates. Also inside the box, this microphone does come with a two in one combo jack adapter if you need it. And finally the last piece of this red Dragon combo kit is the mouse pad and here's another piece just like the keyboard that I found was way higher quality than what I thought it would be. This is the P001 gaming mouse that comes in at 3 by 10 inches with a 0.2 inch thickness and it's way thicker and heavier than I thought it would be. It's rocking a nice red and black red dragon art design, the edges are a little bit raised for keeping your mouse from flying off and yet it really ties our red and black scheme all together. So with all the peripherals out of the way it's now time for the PC. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that we're featuring yet another Dell Optiplex on my channel but 
But before we get into it, just remember that this entire setup only costs $200, so we're not packing some serious hardware in here. This Dell Optiplex 390 is honestly one of the lowest ends of an Optiplex that you can get. If you're looking for a higher end Dell Optiplex gaming PC video, I have an absolute ton of them, and this base model is only rocking an Intel i3-2120, 8GB of DDR3 RAM clocked at 1333 MHz, and only came with a spinning 250GB HDD. Obviously, this is one of the lowest end spec Optiplexes that you can buy right now, and I actually only paid $30 for it off eBay shipped to my door, but it's indeed a mid-tower size case, so we do have some room for upgrades. Speaking of which, the only one that I did for this video to keep our budget around $200 was the graphics card, and I went with this GTX 750 Ti, which you can almost always find either locally or on eBay for around $40. This 750 Ti is perfect because it doesn't require external power connectors from our PSU, which we don't have with this Optiplex model, by the way, and it's actually a decent combination with our i3, so there won't be any serious bottlenecking. With that being said, here's what our total parts list for our setup is looking like. We went a bit over the $200 limit, but I think it's close enough, right? Now that we have this list here, let's quickly talk about how it's actually running games like Valorant, and then we'll talk about how to upgrade this setup. Like I mentioned earlier, Valorant is an incredibly easy to run game, like most esport titles are, by the way, but I still threw together a quick benchmark for you all. In 1080p and low settings, I got a nice average of 80 FPS, which is absolutely perfect for our 75 hertz monitor. All of this Valorant footage was actually recorded by the system by itself, thanks to the GTX 750 Ti and NVIDIA GeForce Experience, so you can indeed record some gaming footage with this $200 setup. With that being said, I want to quickly talk about the upgrade path of not just the PC, but the entire setup. But the very first thing that I would buy is a 500 gigabyte SSD and just either find a use or just get rid of the 250 gigabyte spinning HDD in there. If you install Windows on a spinning hard drive here in 2020, it's just absolutely terribly painfully slow. So I would recommend once you do buy that 500 gigabyte SSD to install both Windows and your games on there. I would personally recommend something like this Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte SSD, which you can find for $65 brand new off Amazon. After that, your CPU could use some upgrading. If you wanna spend a few bucks, you could easily upgrade to an i5-2400 or even an i7-2700K. Those will certainly hold you off for a bit if you wanna stay in that budget gaming realm, but if you're looking for even more performance than that, then I would just recommend saving your money entirely and then eventually upgrading to something like the Ryzen AM4 platform. If you do decide to upgrade that CPU, then you can definitely fit in a more powerful graphics card. Maybe something like an RX 470 or 570 would fit in there just fine. Just make sure you pair it with an appropriate PSU upgrade alongside it. And finally, outside the PC, the only peripheral that I would think needs upgraded right away or in the near future is the mouse. Maybe I'm being too picky. I would much rather spend like 50 bucks and get something like the Logitech G502 Hero and that'll let you destroy the noobs in Valorant way easier. Well, that's going to wrap up my a full $200 PC gaming setup guide, a quick benchmark, and how to upgrade it in the future. As always, drop a comment down below about what you thought of the setup or what you would personally do to change it. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet. Definitely hit that subscribe button and make sure you're following me over on twitch.tv slash Zach's Tech Turf.